Records, Hawaii's on-time inner island. I'm Paula Akana. And I'm Robert Kikaula. Welcome again to Backstage at the Merry Monarch. This year's festival promises to be full of excitement as we celebrate the 30th annual Merry Monarch Festival. When this festival began as an event to attract visitors to the island, the emphasis was not on hula. That came later in 1971 when organizer Dottie Thompson introduced the first Miss Aloha Hula competition. Today, the Merry Monarch Festival is seen as the premier showcase for the hula. This year, KITV is proud to televise live coverage of all three nights of the hula competition. We begin with the Miss Aloha Hula competition on Thursday night. On Friday, we celebrate the Kahiku, or ancient hula, and Saturday is reserved for the Awana, or the modern hula. This year, the festival committee decided to do away with the mandatory competition chant in an effort to make room for more halal. So this year, we'll be seeing a few more halal than usual. In fact, this year, 31 groups are entered, and making their Merry Monarch debut is Halau Hula Okiai Akeali'i, under the directionship of Na Kumuhula, Kahale Richardson, and Kioni Naki. This group has something special to offer. They are from the King's Village, and they are the King's Royal Guard, those, those gun twirlers. The gun twirlers. Uh, <laughs> Why the switch to hula now? Well, when the boys initially had been going to uh, competitions away in the mainland or when we traveled with Hawaii Visitors Bureau, etc., people would ask them uh, if they could dance and they would feel shame because they said, oh, no. So uh, the commander, Commander Paul Naki, um, decided that he'd make it mandatory for all the boys to learn to dance hula. Kumuhula, Keone Naki, is the commander's brother, requiring the king's guard to dance. Hmm. Did anybody object at first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, there's no way. They thought that was, uh, well, you know, just television buttons. They didn't think it was too masculine, and, yeah. You know, shaving your legs wasn't cool and wearing malos. That was the last thing. <laughs> Our halau's name is Halau Hula o Naki Ake'ali. Nothing fancy, it's just the hula school of the king's guard. But in particular, the kia'i was the personal guard of the kings. On Kahiko night, Alau Hula Onaki Ai Akeali'i will perform to Malo Eka and Ka'i to Kane Puwa'a, a song about an uwala or sweet potato farmer. Their awana selection, Heha Vaipi'o. They'll exit with Nakuahivi Elima and enter singing Mai Ka'i Vaipi'o. Are you nervous? No, I'm not nervous. Actually, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm ready to share what I've, what I've put out. I might have been nervous last month because uh, looking, <laughs> you know, the singing was just wow, <laughs> everything. But uh, no. Will, will they dress like the King's Guard? No, nope, they won't dress like the King's Guard. They'll dress in, uh, they'll dress like Hawaiian boys. <laughs> no guard helmets or anything. Do you think about having them dressed uh, as, um, as the King's Guard? Nope. No. <laughs> no. Might, uh, my aunties might go, no. <laughs> <laughs> this hula will enter 18 men, ages 17 to 33, and only one with prior hula experience. It's been rough, but worth it, says Kahale. The entire process has been educating for all involved. Learning to make a kupe'e can be really frustrating for a boy, you know, a city boy who's fast cash, fast food, fast everything is coming in and you have to actually sit down with yourself and 
look at this thing that you picked from this tree that you never looked at, <laughs> you know, getting close to your environment. Not that they never were, but um, to really look at the look at the land now and cherish it a lot more than um, than they've ever been before. Besides learning the hula, learning to sing, learning the language, the culture, this group, already well disciplined through the King's Guard, had a hard time learning to get this, learning to smile. People were expected to be stiff and lifeless, and we've been working on it. A smile, we're still working yet. You know, it's there, but you've got maybe two or three, and we still go to it. <laughs> so you got to be all the way to the whole song, you know, that's the trick. The ultimate goal, says Kahali Richardson, is to please her mentor, the late Daryl Lupinui, hoping, she says, that when he looks down, he'll be satisfied and allow his mana over her kami. To do a, a ka'o, a kaholo, and it's not just any kind, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but that we do have, um, we've learned the sense of spirit, and that with one mind and one heart and one spirit, We'll be there that night, and that, that's what we've learned. That was the ultimate, that when we, we're there that night on the stage, whether we win, lose, what, we've come together as one body, you know, and that um, they've learned ha'a ha'a and to hi'ipoi, to cherish the land, and to strive to be the best with humbleness. Just like a supermarket, anything you need, and you'll see them everywhere. Hello to Hanalei. And talk about service, you go in a little guy, and you come out a big shot. Call them up anytime, day or night. And if you need a little something, you've got it right around the corner. Dad, how about Harry and Son? Hawaii's market. Oh, I'm talking Hawaii's bank. That's Bank of Hawaii. Harry's bank. Hawaii has a proud heritage and proud people committed to the traditions that make these islands a special place. Among them, count the men and women of Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii's airline for more than 60 years. Hawaii is our home, our heritage, our commitment. Hawaiian Airlines is proud to be Hawaiian. For generations, our families have come together to prepare the little ones for the hula festival. This is the true spirit of aloha. But for the children, perhaps the favorite part of our tradition is when I serve the delicious meadow gold nectars, the true taste of Hawaii. When my mother brought me to McDonald's for the first time, I remember French fries because that was her favorite. And now there's three generations of us coming to McDonald's and that's exciting. I think McDonald's has been around for 25 years because you can trust them. In this day and age, I really look for places that offer me good value. I don't know what I'd do raising children right now in Hawaii without a McDonald's. new halal, this is also a year to welcome back some familiar faces. May Lobenstein has been absent from the competition for nearly a decade. This year she returns with new enthusiasm and a halal of her own. Kapa hula o kuuanoi o vaahila. After working with another halal for years, then taking an eight-year break, Kumuhula May Lobenstein now has a halal of her very own. There are many familiar faces, many of the women danced with her before. In fact, it's because of these ladies that she has gone back to teaching the hula. She dropped out eight years ago to take care of her dying husband. I had decided really not, not, not to, um, 
enough already, you know, enough. I've done my part. Um, I had my fill with hula, you know, and, and I watch other people, and I enjoyed what other people were doing. And I tell her, you know, Grandma, you have to. You have to open one. And she's like, no, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> well, eight years later, now she's eight years older, <laughs> she decided that she was, I finally convinced her because it was like, I missed it. You know, a lot of my old hula sisters missed it. <laughs> And so Kapa Hula Oka'ua Noi Ova Ahila was born. I think it's good for her because it's kind of like, you know, a culmination of her career, kind of, because she's never had her own hello. So I think for her it's good too. And then it gives us time to work together, and, and she says that we argue, but no, we don't argue, we have creative differences. <laughs> <laughs> May Leah Lobenstein is May's mo'opuna, or granddaughter. She also represents the halau in the Miss Aloha Hula competition. It's good because I'm really showcasing her. You know, it's like even though I'm out there dancing, everything, you know, that I am as a hula dancer is because of her. And they're going to see her style. And, and I guess, and like how we always say, it's like, my name isn't May Leah. My name is Auntie May's mo'opuna. <laughs> and I'm going to be on stage and be like, oh, you know, look at Auntie May's mo'opuna. But then, that is also a lot of pressure. She's been practicing hard for the Miss Aloha Hula competition, as well as for the group Kahiko and Awana. Auntie May says all of the dancers have been giving their 110%. For the Kahiko competition, they will dance Noluna Oka Halekai Oka Maaleva, a story of Pele and her sister Hiiaka. When I dance, um, not as a um, um, kumuhula, but as a student, we did Noluna Kahalikai, and it was come years ago, no long time ago, and I liked it. Uh, it had, it, it, it sounded like an opera to me, where there was tragic, there was killing, and you know, and um, I enjoyed it. I, I loved doing it, and I, I thought it was a strong, strong dance. And for the Awana competition, the halal will dance to Papa Kolea. Long before I even said I want, said yes, I would come back to Hula, I, ha I, I had wanted to do Papa Kolea. And I said to Millie, you know, if I ever go back to Hula, the dance I want to do is Papa Kolea. Not knowing it was going to fall in this year of sovereignty, not knowing it's going to be the 30th year, the big year at, at Mary Mona. honors the residents of Papakulea, the first Hawaiian homestead community. And I read the, um, all the write-ups that they had on Papakulea and the Hawaiian homesteads and the land, and it's, it's sad, it's sad, very sad. And I thought, well, this is one way I'm going to honor them, I'm going to do this dance for them, and uh, not only for them, but for the, for the Hawaiian people. Is Lobenstein happy being back in the saddle again? On a kind of quiet way. I think I kind kind of enjoy it. I, I'm not going out screaming, hey, I'm back in the mind. Look out, you guys. Yeah. No, it's not that kind of thing. I, I'm kind of happy. Maybe not so much for myself as it is for the, for the kids. smoke there's chicken tender smoked chicken slices then there's melting cheddar and bacon the new smoked chicken cheddar and bacon sandwich at jack the box where there's smoke there's mm. at most places you can get a bite to eat for under a dollar trouble is all you get is a bite but at jack in the box 99 cents gets you a delicious country fried steak sandwich it's more than a bite it's a banquet 
When Koichi Taniguchi opened his small Hilo grocery in 1916, he had no idea it would become a major supermarket chain. He just believed his customers were special. And today, the five KTA superstores offer fresh seafood, custom needs, bakery, deli specialties, every household need with more in store. A lot has changed since 1916, but our promise of good food, variety, fair prices, and friendly service remains. At KTA, you really are someone special every day. Get me a boat to take me there Silver sands on a white hot beach All of my friends are time to spare A cold silver pool in my reach Get the taste of the Rockies with the cold in there The silver bullet I'm gonna get me a boat some way, somehow And a blue silver bullet now Cool flying, so right there now how do you do the first Hawaiian bank high wide? High what? The high wide. The high wide. First Hawaiian bank's high wide. No matter how you do it, it means yes, you can. Aloha, and welcome back to Backstage at the Merry Monarch. This is also a story of a hula halau that is making a return after a two-year absence to Merry Monarch competition. The men and the women of Kavai Li'ula. Now, why did they sit out two years, and why return now? You're about to find out as we talk with their kumu hula, Chinky Mohoa. <laughs> The last time you entered Mary Monarch, uh, your men, first place Kahiko, first place Awana, why the two year absence? Well, because we wanted to take a break. Well, actually, we wasn't supposed to go to the 90 Mary Monarch because I tried to convince the Halau to go traveling. But because the uh, men took the overall in 89, they begged me to go back in 90. So I says, okay, one more year, win or lose, we're going to go. So we went, and they won again. They wanted to go back in 91, and I told them no, because, you know, we wanted to travel. And so we did. We took the two years off. I said, two years, we'll go travel, and then we'll go back to, to Mary Monarch for the 30th anniversary. So that's why we decided to come back, because it's time. It's time. Chinky with the men and women of Kavai Li'ula danced in Baltimore, Washington, D.C. for a lay dedication of a Kamehameha statue there. New York, Toronto, Canada, Japan, and New Zealand. It was a break he says he very much enjoyed. Now, though, it's back to Hilo. The Mary Monarch has become more, um, of course, more competitive. And because it's competitive, you have the quality of the dance to come out as far as um, the precision, uh, um, uh, mentally being prepared as a hula dancer. And I guess to be able to, to dance in front of that many people, you really have to be mentally prepared. Describe your style and your halo of hula. Our style? Well, as you know, we take the style off the men of Waimapuna with Dara Lupinui. And I like my men to be as strong and um, definite with their motions and, of course, clean. And my women to be as graceful as possible so that, you know, when the guys look at them, they're like in La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, the name of your hello? Kawaii Ula. What does it mean and where does it come from? Kauai Li'ula means uh, water mirage or shimmery waters and it's um, like on a hot day you see the heat waves on the, on the road 
and it looks like the, the water, that's what it means. And it's a family name, which is my middle name, that was passed on from my father to my, um, from my grandfather to my father to me. Chinky Mohoy's background in Hulu started in 1976 under George Naope. Then he studied under the late Daryl Lupinui. At the competition, he says he rarely gets to watch the other halal because of the chaos backstage on competition nights, but likes his dancers to watch and to hopefully learn. Oh, watch, he says, but don't get caught up in it. More emphasis, he feels, is needed on worrying about one's own performances. You know, just like paddling canoe, yeah, and you have six guys in your canoe, and if that one of the six guys are looking around and looking in the other person's canoe, now that person has seven and you only have five. So it's like a breakdown in, in manpower. If I was a stranger and I came up to you and I said, what does hula mean? How would you answer me? Well, hula is an interpretation of the, the poetry of our, um, either our stories or a poetry of um, an event that happened in the past and it's just an expression with it as far as body language to bring out this poetry. Hawaii has many special places. To the Hawaiians of old, they were called Vahipana. Over 130 years ago, King Kamehameha IV and his Queen Emma planned a very special place for future generations. Over the decades, it has grown with our islands. Today, Queens is Hawaii's largest and most comprehensive medical center. The Queens Medical Center, serving six generations of island families. Ma Malahoa, the law of the splintered paddle, was proclaimed by Kamehameha. This law sought to guarantee the safety of all who traveled Hawaii's roads. In modern Hawaii, there are many laws to protect us, but people get hurt and need help to recover, to fully enjoy the wonders of life in these special islands. If you are injured in an accident, call the law offices of Ian Maddock. Mai punai kapali pohaku. Hawaii has a proud heritage and proud people committed to the traditions that make these islands a special place. Among them, count the men and women of Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii's airline for more than 60 years. Hawaii is our home, our heritage, our commitment. Hawaiian Airlines is proud to be Hawaiian. I guess I was the first one in the area to buy a, a new Saturn. In fact, I loved it so much and bragged about it so much that uh, my brother-in-law, Vincent, he bought one. And then my brother, Pete, he bought one. Pete's son, Michael, he got one too. And my daughter down in North Carolina, she bought one. My barber, Joe, he's got one too. You notice he don't have a picture of mine because mine's nicer. You bought the identical car. The same line, color guy. and everything. <laughs> We haven't seen our next halau at the Merry Monarch for 13 years, but Kumuhula John Kaimikawa has served as a judge for the competition, and he returns this year with his kane group, Halau Hula o Kuku na o Kala. We talked with Kaimikawa about the importance of the hula. John Kuimikawa is an imposing man as he sits behind his drums watching his dancers Halau Hula O Kukuna O Kala practice for the Merry Monarch Festival. While he judged the Merry Monarch in 1985 and 1986, he has stayed away from competing there for 13 years. He says he and his halau members have used the time to increase their knowledge of the hula and of Hawaii. Well, for myself, competition is not a priority in our halau. We, my first priority is 
education and and enlightening our people through the dance and we take instead of going to Mary Monarch yearly and spending all that money there instead we take a trip to a different island every summer so that we can learn about the place the people there its historical sites It is the kahiko, or ancient dance, that Kuimikawa concerns himself with. The kahiko night for my halal, it's important to us in the way that we are able to show forth a different type of dancing that was indigenous to the island of Molokai. And our purpose there is to educate and enlighten our people that there were many levels, many different styles to the hula, unlike the Kalakawa styling of dance that is prevalent in the Kahiku dancing today. For the Kahiku competition, Kaimikawa's men will perform Kui. You and I will have to wait until Friday night to see that performance, though. We were not allowed to film the dance. Kaimikawa says it is not so much a secret as the dance is sacred. What we are doing is a meleho ailona, a melewanana, which was a prophecy that was chanted in the Heiau Pakui, which is situated today behind of Kilohana Elementary School. It was a very sacred uh, chant, a very sacred dance. Why is it such a secret? It's not so much a secret <clears throat> as it is sacred. And um, what we are doing now is to prepare physically as well as spiritually to be in tune to perform that number that night in Hilo. Kaimikawa has been teaching for 15 years and he says the hula is a very important element in his life. <laughs> Hula to me is very sacred. The hula to me, the ancient dance, is the very the spiritual link that we have to our ancestors. When ancient dance is performed, the chanting, the drumming, those who are listening, they cannot help but take it takes themselves back into the ancient days. They can feel their ancestors. They can feel those things. And just those moments that the dance is being performed, that is why it's so special. That is why it's so important for us Hawaiians to have the dance, because it makes us remember who we are and who our ancestors were. And Kaimikawa promises that those present at the Mary Monarch, as well as viewers throughout the state, will experience through his halal the essence of the hula of ancient Molokai. Those are just four of the many special halal you'll be seeing at this year's Mary Monarch Festival. A reminder, KITV will televise the festival live beginning at 6 p.m. each night. Thursday night, the individual competition, Miss Aloha Hula. Then join the halal as they compete in kahiko competition on Friday. And enjoy the hula awana, or modern hula competition, Saturday. We sincerely hope you've enjoyed this year's Backstage of the Mary Monarch and hope that you will join live KITV coverage of the 30th anniversary of the Mary Monarch Festival. Until next time, aloha hui ho. Aloha.
Backstage at the Merry Monarch Festival has been brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, proud to be Hawaiian. Bank of Hawaii, Hawaii's 